Hey, everybody, it's Phil from the Hey Bay City podcast. A very special episode we have here today with three different guests. First, it's Brian Martindale, who's on an absolute quest across 48 states to save the lives of 100 kids by helping them secure kidney donors. Then we have Jessica. He himself donated a kidney to. She's got an amazing story to the point where her mom was out on Euclid Road with a sign saying, will you donate a kidney to my daughter? Just incredible. And then we meet uh, Shelly from Pinconning, who is currently searching for a kidney donor. And we get her story and the story of all three of these amazing folks together in today's episode. So I'm going to back out and uh, I'd love for you to listen to this episode all the way through. Share it on your social media, however we can, to try to help Shelly get a kidney. So with that, here's a very special episode of the Hey Bay City podcast. Okay, so Jessica... I think everything starts with you. So walk me all the way back to the very beginning of your story. I'm just so intrigued by this and kind of the meeting of all these people. And so I'm just going to sit back. You tell me your story. I'm going to jump in because I'm so excited to talk to you guys. So it all started when I was about like nine is when I started getting back aches. Um, they were just really painful and we went to the doctor and we kept going to the doctor and they wasn't doing anything about it, but giving me mirror lats. And then finally my mom stated that she wasn't leaving unless we figured out what was wrong. Um, a little bit afterwards, we ended up figuring out that I had kidney failure. So my mom ended up one day when I was at school, she ended up going on Wilder Road in Bay City by Walmart holding up a sign saying that my daughter needs a kidney transplant and we got lots of awareness by that ended up getting like onto the news and such and eventually throughout all that we ended up meeting Brian luckily and I was fortunate enough to receive his kidney and have it all go well so ever since then we've just been trying to help others get kidneys because it's a huge importance in 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 Am I correct in that you guys just celebrated your your 10 year kidney anniversary? Yes. Wow. That is correct. Last Wednesday. How <laughs> fun is that? Sorry. Brian, you got you got a good kidney in there. Very cool. So so Brian, yeah. how how, yeah. how did you end up discovering Jessica and her mom? But, but before you answer that, I just want to give a shout out Jessica to your mom. Like what an all-star to go up, make a sign, stand out on Wilder Road and say, I am going to do whatever it takes to get my daughter a kidney. So mom, if you're listening to this, you get all the awards, all the trophies. So Brian, how did you end up connecting with Jessica and her mom? Um, well, I had previously uh, tried to help a friend of ours, a late friend of ours now, um, through a paired kidney donation in 2011. Uh, and then, um, that didn't quite work out for him medically. But uh, 2012, I'm building a store in downtown Bay City next to Allen Shoes for my Carmen and Caparel. And I literally ran out of gum. Like I said in the newspaper story, I, I chew a lot of gum. So I walked over to the Liberty Party store there by the police station. And uh, there was Jessica's face uh, on the Bay City Times right in front of the cash register. And I read her story, uh, read about what uh, her, Stacey, her mom, had done, and uh, I was inspired to call, and I found out right away that I was her matching blood type, so I knew I could be a direct donor to her. Um, and I recontacted the University of Michigan uh, about three days later and was retested uh, about two weeks after that. And then another two weeks passed, and I was notified first that I was a match. Uh, we matched, uh, like uh, they say, about uh, like a hundred, uh, one in a hundred thousand match, as if we were mm. siblings. Wow! Even though we had never, yeah, yeah. And the the closer the match, obviously, the less chance for rejection. So um, I found out about two weeks before, and uh, you know, was asked if I wanted to proceed, which I said yes. Uh, and uh, they were notified the day before Thanksgiving in 2012, and uh, they said, um, "Well, Stacy said that her and Jess screamed so loud that I should have heard them because we only live four blocks apart." 
<laughs> <laughs> and uh, then we ended up uh, meeting for the first time uh, about two weeks before uh, our surgeries um, through a, a friend of mine who used to be a reporter for CNN who wanted to do a documentary and kidney donation. Um, she was uh, introduced us, and then uh, we met for the second time when we rode uh, together. She didn't know uh, that I was her donor in between, but um, our uh, our good friend uh, who uh, uh, who provided our limousine, uh, Vinny, you know Vince Stewart. I'm mm -hmm. uh, sorry to stumble with words there, but he had provided a limousine service and drove us uh, to our surgeries and back. He had held the benefit for Jess. Uh, I knew at that point I was her donor and she didn't know her, her mom didn't know. And I came that night and I sold my clothing to benefit her. And it was, it was a surreal experience standing behind her knowing that I was going to be her donor, but that she didn't know that yet. Wow. So, so when, so when did you guys like officially know each other? Oh, uh, December, well, January, uh, um, uh, January 11th okay. or January, uh, yeah, 11th. Uh, hmm. we, I mean, we, we knew each other, but we rode down together on, uh, January 12th, yeah. I mean, January 10th, I should say in Vince's limousine. And then January 13th of 2013, uh, we had our simultaneous surgeries at the university of Michigan and, uh, they took my kidney from the transplant center over to, uh, children's and, uh, hmm. she's uh, been in charge of it ever since it's her kidney now, and, uh, she's taking great care of it and, uh, yeah, we had a nice celebration of the 10 years last week. Yeah, it sounds like you're taking great care of it. Brian, what was it like meeting Jessica for the first time? Oh, it, it was it was a, another surreal experience to know that, you know, I, I was going to give part of, you know, my living self. You know, I was still hard to contemplate that at that point, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then she was going to take over and carry on that part of me, which which she's done. And I, I hope she does you know, for the rest of her life, uh, long after I'm here, a uh, part of me can still be here, you wow. know, and, 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 and I think of it, and I, I, I put it this way, when I do a speech uh, for kidney donation, a lot of times, uh, I'm living basically two lives, here's, here's Jess, she's at Eastern Michigan, as you can see, studying, and here I am in Bay City, and I'm, I'm the other half, literally. Wild. Jessica, what was it like meeting Brian for the first time? I remember being like very excited and I wasn't sure what was going on because like you know there was like news people and then just me and my mom in a corner and I, I just wanted to meet this man I'm like give me my kidney right. like <laughs> who is this I, I want right to hug now, you bro. I want to thank you like <laughs> just come here so awesome. it was really exciting it was enjoyable I I remember meeting him at the like bank what for my kidney and I was so confused because they were like yeah this man wants to see you and say hi and I'm like okay and just 10 year old little me just mm -hmm. said, said hello to this man I think I got like a free t-shirt from him from like the Crummer <laughs> Inc and I was like having some cool new clothes yep. awesome you know thank but, you so much man for this t-shirt with the kidney hunt <laughs> <laughs> but yeah and ended up later finding out that he was my kidney donor it was just amazing we didn't really like connect until like Brian said like January 10th when we went down for the procedure and everything and mm. I just remember being nervous and you know meeting him and everything so it yeah, was really so, exciting so so pulling it back just a little bit now that you are no longer 10 and that you've had 10 years to really like think about this in a different way what what, what is it like receiving a gift like this it's absolutely amazing like like how he said that he's living a double life um I always think about everything that I experience just because of him mm -hmm. because there there are so many people that I've known for years now that I only met because Brian gave me his kidney I wouldn't have the best friends I have from middle school or the experiences I have from him or even just a regular somewhat childhood because of him. Mm. And mm. I'm just very fortunate for me having a quick experience of getting my kidney, not having to go on dialysis, and being able to return back to some type of normalcy. Mm. Yes, I, I'm, I'm happy for you too. Brian, Thank you. Brian, you didn't stop there though. 
Right. No. So so tell me tell me about how your story moves on from there. Well, from there, uh, I became a peer mentor uh, for the University of Michigan Transplant Center as a volunteer. Uh, my job is to take a potential donor through the whole process of what they'll experience and go through in becoming a living kidney donor. Hmm. So I've done that for seven years now. And um, Jessica and I, uh, together and separately, have been in other uh, news stories. We've been able to get on people we know who needed a kidney transplant and Lo and behold, uh, not just because of those stories, but those people have gotten kidneys. Mm. And um, last uh, March of 2022, I participated in another uh, story on um, TV5 for a friend who is now actually the treasurer of Kidneys for Kids, our nonprofit. And uh, after being on uh, TV with Tracy and seeing um, the response to her, uh, her story, she needs her second kidney. I thought, well, uh, we've advocated like this successfully, and it, it gets uh, obviously a lot of attention. Why couldn't I do something like this on a national level? You know, we've been doing it uh, with the grace of TV5 uh, a lot here. And then I thought, well, you know, I donated to a De Jess when she was 10. I should be doing this for children after I really studied the statistics and found out there were 1,100 children today that need a kidney transplant that are listed and 10,000 more that are on dialysis that probably will need a kidney. And nobody wants to see a child with any kind of uh, affliction, a disease, or any kind of sickness. And um, so that's where uh, Kidneys for Kids, the idea came about, and uh, the idea for the trip, which I started last year, uh, and which I'll uh, do in a, um, a full-scale 48-state trip this year, uh, which will be advocating in 50 different cities with families who have a child who needs a kidney transplant. Very so, cool. uh, and now it's instead of just a trip, uh, we are an official 5013C nonprofit. And our actual mission from Kidneys for Kids is to financially assist families who have a child that is going through transplant or um, kidney treatment like dialysis. We assist them with costs that aren't covered by insurance. Beautiful. Beautiful. Do, do an amazing work, Brian. Thank you, Phil. Shelly, now you enter the story. Start me, start me off with the beginning of your story. So my name is Shelly Gromoski, and I found out about three and a half years ago that I need a kidney transplant. I found out my kidney function was only at 20%. And since then, um, I just started dialysis four months ago. My kidney function right now is at 12%. So I'm desperately in need of a kidney and I'm doing dialysis at home and I'm doing that every day. And I had a benefit back in September and that's where I met Brian. He came into my benefit and he said, hi Shelly, my name's Brian. And I said, Brian Martindale, I know you. I seen you on the news. You gave that girl in Bay City a kidney. You're the kidney guy. And he guy. said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I was like, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to meet you. So it was it was just crazy that he came to my benefit and now he's trying to help me find a kidney. Mm, mm, very, very cool. When it maybe maybe it would be helpful somebody seeing this this interview, and in this could be either Shelly or, or Brian, whoever wants to take this, but say that somebody's watching this interview and they have like a little little twitch in their brain saying May, maybe I'd be willing to donate maybe this is me maybe Brian similar to you with Jessica feeling kind of a pull pull towards this Shelly what, what would constitute somebody to be a, a a viable donor for a kidney for you well you have to be a healthy person you can't be diabetic um, you can't have any heart problems mainly just being a healthy person and, and being a good match. Okay. I'm O positive, so I would need somebody that would be either O positive or O negative. Okay, yeah, but Brian, any any other in, information? I mean, you're, you've, you've kind of walked lots of people th through this, and you mentioned also something like a direct donor. Are there right. other information people should know? Well, that, that, that's what she's saying. Um, to be a direct donor to Shelley, you would need to be an O positive or O negative. Okay. Um, but you could also participate in a paired or, or a chain donation program where if you don't match Shelly's blood type, you can donate to somebody you might not ever meet, 
Mm. But that buys Shelly a credit that pushes her to the top of the list mm. at her transplant center. And then she would receive the next viable kidney that matches her blood type. Ah, okay. So if, even if you're not um, a match, you can donate. Uh, people donated into their 70s. Um, the preferable um, ages are mid-20s to late 40s. Okay. But like I said, I donated when I was 51. Here I am, 61. Perfect health, still doing everything I did with uh, two kidneys. Mm. And I will tell you, um, as a donor, anybody considering uh, becoming Shelley's donor, it will be the greatest experience of your life. Um, you, you won't find any anything that will match it, any high, anything that will give you the, the feeling of giving somebody else part of your life and then seeing them go on and live a healthy life like I've got to watch Jess do for 10 years now. Yeah, it, no yeah. You, you, you mentioned something in there about Li living a healthy life and you, you're doing all the same things that you could do with two kidneys and may, maybe talk to that point for just a second because there might be people listening to this saying I'm willing to do this I want to do this I love this but then there's also part of them saying but what about my health I, I have a family and what if I get sick or what if I can't you know, participate in life in the way that I could or care for my kids like I could, and that might be holding them back. So maybe talk to, talk to that point a little bit. Well, well, part of it is, you know, you have to have faith. You have to have faith that, you know, things are going to go well. The statistics show there is a very, very low um, rate of complication or any change in your lifestyle from donating a kidney. You know, th this comes from over 50 years now of kidney donation you know, uh, research and, and kidney donations happening since the early 1960s. So um, the average person that donates a kidney actually lives a longer life. The mortality rate is greater for a kidney donor than a non-kidney donor. Mm -hmm. Because after donating, we go into it, obviously, we go through every test in the world to become a kidney donor. So you're getting that bonus is just going through the testing. You're going to know from stem to stern that you are in perfect health and that you have two viable kidneys and that if you give away one that other one is going to take over the function for both mm. and you're going to be just fine um you're going to see if people like i say i'm i'm a living example um to be able to tell you that um nothing has changed in you know like i say my life uh the things that i do uh sports that i play um uh, i receive a gift every time i see jessica and that's something else you can't buy with any amount of money and, and I, I told that in our last interview today, um, and I'm very serious about it. I, I think I receive more of a gift sometimes than I gave Jessica every time I see her. Mm. You know, just seeing everything she's gone through, like she said, I've got to see her go through her teenage years. I've got to see her do plays in high school. I see her in college now. She serves on our board of directors. So um, becoming a living kidney donor, you won't find a greater gift that you can give yourself, let alone the person that you're trying to help. Very cool. Shelly, maybe you, you mentioned this when, when you were speaking, but do, do you know how long the, the wait list is for a kidney for you? For me, because I'm O positive, I'm a little harder match. So at U of M, they said between five and six years. And I've been on the waiting list right now for two years. So I'm trying to find my own kidney so mm -hmm. I don't have to do dialysis for four more years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Brian? Another thing for her, too, the shorter time on dialysis, the better chance she has when she gets a kidney of yeah. non-rejection. Yeah. So yeah. The, the sooner we find a donor for Shelly, the better. It's okay. not just not just getting her away from dialysis and giving her the health, but giving her the best chance to keep that kidney for the rest of her life. Mm, makes a lot of sense. If, if somebody watches this or reads it uh, here on Hey Bay City, and they say, I am very interested, even if they're not, or first we'll take Shelly's example. How, how, would they go, how would they go about saying, I'm O positive, I wanna explore whether or not we're a good match. What's, what's the next step for them? Um, well, they will go through Shelly's contact. Shelly, would you give them your contact at U of M? Yes, um, the U of M phone number to donate a kidney is 1-800-333-9013. Okay, so you would just you would call up the kidney donation hotline and say, "Hey, I'm 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 interested in donating a kidney to Shelly." Is that is that how you would you would go about it? Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. Michelle yes. Gamowski. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. And so, and that uh, she's an old blood type from Pinconning, Michigan. And yes. I want to test to become her donor, and they will take it from there. Okay. So call that number, and we'll of course put it in the caption so that it's easy for everybody to get. Call that number and say, yeah. "I want to give my kidney to Shelley from Pinconning." <laughs> um, wait, we're gonna we're gonna do our best to find you a kidney here here, Shelley. I I want to thank. Brian, for, for what you're doing, Jessica, amazing story. I'm so glad that you're, you're living a full, happy life. Shelly, you are such a fighter, and I want to thank you for sharing your story. Thank and you. And we're, we're going to see if, if we can get you a kidney. So I, I thank you so much, guys, for, for coming on and thank you, uh, talking to me and sharing your story. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. We really appreciate it, Phil. Great show.